Vote Texas uh, 2020. I'm Jordan Williams. And I'm Dejanique Garrison, and we want to give you some news that I think a lot of folks anticipated this evening. Projected winner of the GOP, Texas presidential primary is going to be President Donald Trump. You're looking at the Democrats race. Democrats trying to figure out who's going to walk away with Texas's 228 delegates. Right now, Bernie Sanders in the lead. He and Joe Biden have been polling pretty closely, neck and neck here statewide. This is with roughly a fifth of Texas's precincts reporting at this point. Sanders on top with 29%. You see Bloomberg in third. And I think a lot of that has to do with Bloomberg and his ads and his billboards and his phone calls. Lots of resources flooding into the Lone Star State. Let's talk about the race for U.S. Senate. These are the Democrats who are hoping to face incumbent John Cornyn. And we have at this point MJ Hagar, uh, a combat veteran from the Air Force in, in first place with 41% of the vote. She had been polling very well. Uh, Dejanique, she had the edge when it came to uh, the finances to pull off this race. Absolutely, but you do see Christina Ramirez close on uh, on her tail in terms of the folks who are running for this seat. Twelve other contenders. She's at 21 percent. And let's flip over to the Republican side. Senator John Cornyn, 79 uh, percent of the vote. Again, this is roughly a fifth of the statewide returns in at this point. Should be enough for him to avoid having to do any sort of a runoff. And we want to make sure we keep you guys up to date as the numbers continue you to cycle in this evening. Text the word results to 409-838-1212 and we'll be sure to text you back with a link to all of the latest information on this Super Tuesday. And keep our 12 News Now app handy. We'll be updating the latest returns at the bottom of your screen. All right, right now taking a strong lead, John Cornyn. So we want to toss out to him to see what he has to say on this Tuesday evening. As we move on to the general election, we will cede no vote in any region of our state. Like I've done in the Senate, I'll reach across the aisle. Welcoming Texans caught in the Democrat Party's civil war and repelled by socialism. We'll ask them to join our efforts, and I bet many of them will. We're going to work to continue to unite Republicans and to make sure that we win from the White House to the courthouse. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! And that, of course, starts with the election of Donald J. Trump as the next president of the United States. Yeah. Yeah! Yeah! We are making our choice tonight, and we choose Texas, and we're going to keep fighting for her. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Let's keep up this momentum, and let's win in November. Yay. May God continue to bless all of you, and may God continue to bless the great state of Texas and the United States of America. Yay. Live remarks there from Senator John Cornyn, feeling very good. Uh, early returns show him with 79% of the vote. You heard him ready to focus on the general election. He called for unity right down the Republicans' ticket. Mm -hmm. And if the numbers continue to trend as they have been early this evening, look, looks like he may be going up against MJ Hager, who is a combat veteran. We'll take a look, hopefully, at those Democratic numbers. You know, there were 12 Democrats uh, in the primary today, and Dejanique is right. This uh, MJ Hager, who is a combat veteran uh, from Central Texas, mm -hmm. really, really uh, looking very strong at this point. Here you can see 41% of the vote. Uh, Tom Tassinger from the Wilbur Enterprise is with us as well. I want to bring him in to talk a little bit about this. They de she would need upwards of 50% plus one yes. to avoid a runoff, right? But, but that is an amazingly strong showing mm -hmm. for her to, to, to get in the 40s in that huge uh, field is is impressive and it suggests that if there is a runoff which is likely she would probably prevail but but those are big numbers you could have easily seen all of those candidates bunched up in the 15 and 20 percent range she she really stood stood out in this race and what do you make of her uh assuming she she prevails in in, in the runoff so to speak uh challenging uh cornyn in, well in democrats November. were very excited two years ago when beto o'rourke almost beat ted cruz and that 
would have been a huge upset, and no one gave him any chance when he started. He was largely outknown outside of West Texas. He came within 2.6 percentage points of doing it. So when Democrats saw John Cornyn up this time, they thought, well, maybe we can get him too. We'll see. We'll see. Yes. We will, we will watch that one closely. You see officially there, we've put the check mark on Senator Cornyn. <laughs> yes. You heard his speech moments ago live here on our 12 News YouTube feed because uh, he is quite confident uh, with these early numbers that he has easily uh, won his party's uh, nomination. Okay, so let's head back to the presidential race. We, we had to cut it off a little bit. We did um, pause. We did pause for just a second, but our YouTube viewers, we want to pick back up. We were talking about this notion of being a democratic socialist and how some folks are saying that doesn't exist. But Bernie Sanders and a lot of his supporters are saying, oh, yeah, it does. And, and you see it with us heading to, to the polls and supporting Sanders. It, it, it is a distinction he makes. Dejanique, it's, it's a generational thing too. Older people like me, <laughs> you hear the word socialist, you think of Cuba, Soviet Union, yeah. et cetera. Many young people don't have that negative view, which is why many of them are supporting Bernie Sanders so strongly. They think of Denmark, Sweden, Norway, where there's free health, not free health care, but there's health care for everyone. It's automatic. Uh, uh, more protections for the workers in terms of layoffs higher minimum wages, that sort of thing, guaranteed vacation, guaranteed sick leave. So that's what, that's what Bernie Sanders says he believes in. His critics say otherwise. His critics say, well, you would end up being too, you would have too heavy of a hand mm -hmm. on workers, on employers, that sort of thing. But that's the general divide. Hmm. Very a, it is a great divide, yes, a significant one. I'm glad you got your answer in because we have to take another break. Okay. It's the magic of television and YouTube. We are everywhere tonight, and we'd love to send you results if you text us at 409-838-1212. We're going to take a quick break.